Well, you guys, <clears throat> I'm back again today for the second live stream. And we are supposed to be live streaming today with B-Dub. He isn't here yet. He isn't here yet. We have a, I have to have him today on the live stream because he is going to talk to us about visas, residencies, moving abroad permanently, citizenships, how to get the residency, how to, how to, how to, how to, and what. But we are still waiting on him. I think he's trolling us right now. So we're going to give it a few more minutes. Uh, I'll let you guys ask some questions. And then in the meantime, we'll, we'll wait on him. Let Floyd call in. This is going to be informative entertainment. Yeah, people want entertainment, but B-Dub is not around. He's been having me laugh on the back end telling me about y'all, but he's not around. In the meantime, if you want me to react to some content, you could drop some content real quick while we are waiting. No, I had the cigar right here. You know, we're waiting for B-Dub, man. We're waiting for B-Dub. Did you take a nap in between lives? No, I didn't. I did not. Did I go back and really listen to what that chick was saying? So, Tajwan, uh, Tajwan, Tajwan GC, I seen that you uh, left a comment on the video saying that you thought that she was just saying the dude was being, uh, to be honest. So, the guy that I met her through that was also there, confirmed in the comments the same thing let me find it So, dude was hella informed, but he can be, be anti black. I wouldn't say he's the anti black. Well, no, what the girl was saying, because we had confirmed, because I made sure in the entire video I confirmed with her, because I heard her say it. I was like, maybe, maybe she don't know what she's talking about. So I confirmed. Are you saying that you have two boyfriends or you have a boyfriend and if you see something, you can go, you can sleep with whoever you want? And she was saying, yeah, like I want us to be together. I want to have a man, but I can still sleep with other men, basically, is what she was saying. Which uh, you can stay in America for that, but at least she was being honest. At least, you know. She wants side ninjas, yeah. Wait, no, beat up. I'm gonna give beat up another call real quick.
Hey, right, send me the voicemail. Well, anyway, you guys. Oh, he said he's busy. Anyway, you guys, I've been running the show. I mean, I've been I've been working on creating a informative guide for people that want to move to specific countries. So right now, uh, he said he can't do the live right now. What we'll do it. We'll talk about this. We'll do a call in. A call in. Uh, I'm doing a permanent residency. And for example, Chile is the first country that I'm going to do because I recommend you guys move to places like Chile and Uruguay, and especially Argentina if you're looking for the best financial benefit. But I wrote down step by step what you need, what you need. I did my own research, what you need, and what you need to do to get permanent residency in Chile. Then I made another document. I did research on the benefit of raising children or what is it like to raise children in Chile. I wrote down a document for that. Then I studied the work culture, see what some people were saying about work culture. In a short document because it's not really much you can say about that. Did that. Then I looked up what is the uh, diplomatic relations with the rest of the world as far as peacekeeping, meaning like wars and stuff like that. I did a document about that. Would they be neutral in World War III? You know, what is their military like? How often do they get into conflict? No, I don't think Chile gets into conflict often, but I put that in there. Um, the laws that you need to go, that you need to know before you go to Chile. Like, for example, in Thailand, most of us would not know it's illegal to wear underwear. I mean, to not wear underwear. Like, you cannot free ball and wear a pair of jeans with no underwear underneath. That's against the law. Laws like that that you would not know about Chile. I went ahead and wrote those out for you guys and looked up some laws. Then I found the top banks in Chile, which, for example, I believe is pronounced in Portuguese, it's pronounced Ichao. That is a bank out of Brazil, but they have one in Chile as well. And I wrote the insurance plans that come with the bank. For example, like B Dub was telling me, uh, whenever if you keep your money in Greece, they don't have the same type of laws over the banks like the United States. So when Greece was going bankrupt or they were, you know, they weren't doing that well as a country, they were taking up to 20 percent of people's money out of the bank. And that is very important that you know about that, because if you have a lot of money or money in general, you want to know how much of it is at risk. I believe in the United States, was it um, up to five? What is it? Five hundred thousand dollars or something like that? Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That you're guaranteed if the government takes all the money out of your account like they have another depression and then i put best areas or cities to live in in chile meaning the best cities and then what are the best areas in those cities to live in so i'll be doing that for three or four cities i'm not going to stress myself out and do a bunch of cities i mean a bunch of countries up front yeah he is late but that's what I'm working on right now. I got a lot of stuff I want to do, but you cannot depend. I was scrolling through uh, some satanic shit. I was just scrolling through the app and got a psychotic deviation about you. You are still in love with someone who you think doesn't love you back. No, you're incorrect. No, I'm not in love. I don't go to sleep thinking about anybody. My water app. Yeah, there's nobody I'm in love with. I don't go to there's nobody that I go to sleep thinking about. <clears throat> We're gonna do a QA. B dub said he's working right now. We're going to have to just push the live stream back. Yeah, B-Dub flaked on us, man. He got me sitting over here looking stupid. I could have been cutting my hair. I could have been taking a nap. This is what B-Dub did to us. And he said we was niggers. The best city in Brazil that I've been to is Salvador Bahia. I guess you could actually include those as part of the travel guide. 
or make the travel guide part of the expat thing. Yeah, B Dub ain't here. So we're going to find something else to do, you guys. Uh, till at least Monday. I just bought more days in my Airbnb. Yeah, let's do a call in. Fuck it. Education's over. We can watch Terry Wilson's live. Uh, I have in my travel guide what apps you can use besides Uber. But I'm going to go ahead and give you this one, which there's one called DD or in Portuguese, Gigi. D I D I. That's a good app to get around Buenos Aires if Uber's not working. Let me uh, set up the uh, thing. Hello? What's going on? What's going on, Austin? How are you today? I'm doing all right, man. It's hot. Or maybe I'm just hot because I've been sweating all day over here. How are You're, you? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I just want to say thank you so much for uh, for what you're doing. We really appreciate you, man, because you really are our eyes when it comes to, you know, visiting these other countries. And, you know, your experience is basically our experience. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate what you're doing for uh, for older men and younger men, man, because it's a it's a it's a lot. It's a lot. This channel definitely opened my eyes and definitely showed me like, damn, there really are a lot of different options outside of America because America, it's 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 i'm 23 years old and i'm being honest with you it's not it's not looking good it's not looking yeah, good i'm yeah. in new york too i'm in new york too so it's bad wow i appreciate it man yeah i appreciate you uh it feels good to hear that you found value in the content um what what is it like in new york well i know it's i know it's bad with the immigration right now too though uh in what sense what do you mean how what do you mean well what would you say new york living in new york overall is like I mean, I'm from, I live, I live, I live in the suburbs of New York, so I'm not in the city. I'm not in like Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens. I mean, over there, it's kind of, it's like I said, like if you're born there, you will know how to operate. You wouldn't know how to, you would know how to move. Right. But I'm not from like Queens, Brooklyn, Bronx. I'm not from there. I'm from deep, deep, deep in like Long Island. So it's like when I go to the city, it's a whole, it's a different culture shock. You know what I'm saying? Like the way that they carry themselves is kind of different. The people on Long Island carry themselves kind of different. So it's, 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 it's all right. It's all right. I do know like the Pookies and the Ray Rays, they definitely win over here. That's a fact. That's a big old fact. They win over here. Really? And, uh, yeah. Hell, hell yeah. The Pookies and the Ray Rays, you know what I'm saying? Like the K Flocka Walkers, all these type of guys, they, they, they definitely win in New York. No, no, no lie. So you got a girl in New York? Uh, I was messing. I was I was messing with someone here in New York, but I just I just cut it off because I, the whole attitude. She was she was from, she was from uh she was from the city. She was from the Bronx, and I was, you know, I was dealing with her, and I just didn't like the attitude and all the other stuff that came with it. I'm just like, yo, I'm not I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And then I found your content, and I'm like, yo, I no, I definitely gotta start traveling because once I finish nursing school, it's up. I can't what wait. What are you thinking about doing? My so I'm African. I'm Nigerian. So I've been to I've been to Nigeria. I've been to I've been to I've been to damn near uh I've been to many, many countries in Africa. I've been to Angola, Nigeria, I went to Ghana, Senegal, but I really, really want to go to um I wanna go to Ethiopia. I wanna go to Ethiopia and I wanna go to Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya. So how old were you first started traveling? Uh I'm twenty three. I started traveling when I was about like eighteen. So 
I was about like 18 years old. I started traveling. Um, I have family in Africa, Nigeria, so I, I usually went by myself. But um, eventually, I started just like going abroad, just going to different countries by myself in Africa. Okay. Uh, so were you just now getting hip to the women abroad? Uh, low key, yeah, because I really wasn't. I really wasn't focused. When I was going to Africa, I wasn't focused on the women. I was more so focused about the culture. And I had family friends there. So I was just there staying there for a couple of days. I wasn't really too focused on like what's going on with the women. I wasn't, I didn't care. But now I'm like, yo, what the hell? Like, I really I was I was basically in the village when I was like going to Africa. You know what I'm saying? Especially like in Nigeria. I was really chilling with my family friends deep in deep in deep in where they stay at. Now I'm like, okay, now I need to start going on. And now I want to know what's up with the women. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game from the States over there. It is, it is, it is. I like Africa. Africa is really nice, but uh depends on where you go. It really depends on where you go. Also, like Nigeria, Nigeria is a cool place, but it's like, in my opinion, like Nigeria got a lot of people. Nigeria, there's a lot of wealthy people in Nigeria, so it's just like you're gonna spend. On depending who you meet, you're gonna spend. Depending on who you meet, because some girls have been accustomed in Nigeria, because like there are a lot of guys doing pretty okay in Nigeria, doing well, and then they they spend really, really, they spend a lot. They spend a lot. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Okay. Yeah, I I never made my way around in Nigeria. You got a couple other people here sitting in the back uh what's going on hey what's good with you what's good with you yo yo i got so a quick I got quick i got a quick question for you my guy first of all i appreciate you for uh all, all the work that you do really appreciate you real insightful quick question so let's Thank say you. that you're not fluent in portuguese and spanish okay. like you are right yeah would you still no no well let me let me rephrase it out of which two continents would you rather reside in either africa or south america and you don't know and you're not fluent in portuguese and spanish maybe hola hasta la vista shit like that that's all you know uh i mean for an easier lifestyle i'll pick africa because they don't know english very most people are going to know english fluently there uh you're going to have a very but i mean you could i have not practiced spanish i have not practiced spanish pretty much at all like I, the spanish you hear me speak is from yeah. me knowing portuguese and then from me just listening and every little struggle i learn i pick up the words and then like now i could pretty much communicate in spanish now so eventually i forgot what they call it i don't know if it's naturalization or uh some something the word is basically saying like you know just from being around spanish you start to mm -hmm. know it i guess the same way how you learn english when you were born like you know your parents are speaking and eventually you just it just catches on yeah i can actually answer that too real quick because i lived in um i lived in tanzania and then now i'm in um, buenos aires so i know spanish and i know like maybe a good 40 percent of swahili and when i lived in i lived in uh, Dar es Salaam and this place called Sala Sala and a lot of the people there know English in Africa and that's like a good starting point if you want to do Africa or Tanzania but if you want to move to like South America you're going to have to learn Spanish there's like no way around it you have to do at least like opening conversation um, getting to know some people is kind of like bilingual but Start studying it now, and then after like 90 days, it gets a little bit easier. Yo, Austin, you agree with that? You must know Spanish to be out there. And uh, if not, I would I would say that you you do. I mean, you can do it. You can be here without it, but I would say you need to know Spanish too, because otherwise it's gonna be it's gonna be too difficult. Like it wasn't so difficult for me because I knew Portuguese, but had I not knew Portuguese. I would stay like a week max in these places. Got you. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, because yeah, that's that's otherwise that's too hard. Yeah, I feel like I would... Go ahead. 
I'm sorry. Oh, I feel like learning a la learning a language is super easy. I feel you know what I did because, uh, like I uh, I started taking well I started taking Spanish in like high school and stuff like that in college. But the best way to learn Spanish is once you watch like sitcom shows. You know what I'm saying? And you can put the translation in also English and also the under in Spanish so you can match up the words. So it's super super like you can watch a lot of telenovelas which are like romantic TV shows. If you actually take your time, you can be fluent. I mean, not super fluent, but you know what's going on in like two, three months. Yeah, it, it pretty much took me like maybe three months for Swahili and maybe like eight months for, for Spanish. But you definitely yeah. have to actually be inside the country. Like my first, my first uh, South American country was Colombia. And people are not really going to give you the time of day if you basically don't know anything with Spanish whatsoever. Um, maybe at least try to learn words where you can like ask for directions, ask for like where to eat and all that other shit. But uh, right. other than that, if you are not trying to learn Spanish, you're going to probably get the bottom of the barrel in every experience, whether that's dating, women, going out, traveling. You're pretty much going to get like D or C level experience without Spanish. <laughs> That's also in, also in America too. If you know Spanish in America, you want to talk to a Latina in America, and you know Spanish, it really boosts you up. Like, it'll boost you up 100. percent 100. percent That's one thing I definitely know. And also, since you know Swahili, you also know Arabic too. You know why, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's also Arabic and Spanish too. But yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's not cool. Austin, so you're gonna go to? Do you want to go to an Arabic country, Austin? Yeah, Saudi Arabia. That's lit. That's cool. That's cool. Saudi Arabia. Um, what is it? I, I, Iraq. I even think I would go to Iran too. I just I see how safe that is. Iran. I don't know too much about it, but the women are there are very beautiful though. Very beautiful. Yeah, from what I've seen in the states, you know the Persian looking ones. They're, they, they beautiful. They're very very beautiful. Hey, Austin, I had a quick question about um, you talking about uh, residency because okay. um, I was actually looking into three different places in South America, specifically uh, Paraguay, uh, here in Argentina, and um, and uh, Chile, because I believe Chile has like the strongest economy, maybe outside of maybe Brazil, but has the strongest economy in South America. But Buenos yes. Aires, I feel like Buenos Aires has the most powerful passport because of how much access you have to like other European uh, countries and stuff like that compared to all the other passports in South America. So I was going to say, like, what would you prefer? Would you rather have like a passport in like Argentina where it's maybe like the passport you get like a couple of more extra countries? or somewhere in Chile where it's more like a stronger economy. It's not always fluctuating. Uh, I would say Chile. That's part of the reason why I like Chile. That's actually the first country that I'm doing on my uh, little course. Well, I don't know what you call a course, but it's a, it's a group of uh, PDF documents that I did some research on getting residency and all that kind of stuff. So uh, Argentina is, so I know people in Chile People in South America go to Chile to work and get a passport, and then they go to the United States because the Chilean passport, they don't need a visa to get to the U.S. I don't know if Argentina's like that, too. Let me see. Do Argentines need a visa to visit the U.S.? Uh Yeah, so people in Argentina would need to apply for a visa to go to the United States. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But in Chile, they wouldn't. So in that case, if you want to talk about them visiting the United States, yes, but let's see, is the Chilean passport stronger than Argentina? And in between, um, I'd rather stay where there's a better economy because if there's a better economy, it's more options for you to grow your money as well. Yeah. Like Paraguay. So the three that I recommend the most is Argentina, Paraguay, and Chile. Paraguay is a place that's boring right now, but maybe five or six years from now, it'll be unrecognized. That one city of Asuncion will be unrecognizable. 
because they have cranes all throughout the city like the entire city is being built now so it's 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 on its way there but it's going to take time so if you're going to invest in paraguay the time would be now because right now the only thing that's a skyscraper in paraguay is apartment buildings apartment buildings and like two office buildings that's it so it's still very under that they have no skyline pretty much but you go to chile that's a completely different story they got the tallest skyline in uh, the tallest building well i guess you say skyline the tallest building all south america is in chile a lot of brazilians are expats in chile they have businesses in paraguay and chile so i would i would be more most interested in paraguay and chile but paraguay would be the easiest to get a residency out of all three mm -hmm. awesome awesome let me ask you something did you see afro argentinians in uh, argentina I think I might have seen two or three the entire three weeks I was there. They're they're out here, bro. They're they're definitely out here because when I was out here, the first thing I was looking for was do they have like African food? And so yeah. you know you have to definitely have to you you definitely have to like search for them. But like for instance, like uh, I was looking for somebody that does like black hair, you know, like you know um, twist and all that other stuff. But there's uh there's a a shop here in chinatown like the chinatown area of buenos aires where it's uh african women that have that owns like this shop and you can go in there it's nothing but african women like working there doing hair there they own the spot and all that other stuff so they're in like little you know parts of different cities but we don't have like a big community like you would see like in the states okay that's a good thing that's a good thing because I was doing research about like Argentina and this whole thing about the racist history and I'm I'm glad it's not like it's not it's not it's not there anymore right because I was reading about it and I, I mean there's race everywhere there's racism everywhere it's okay. there, but it's not like what it used to be yeah yeah I mean okay. you, you you're not gonna get like oh what is it called like overt overtly racist people you know but yeah. you're definitely gonna have like people maybe look at you because you're not you're kind of different from yeah. other people but i mean that's kind of like expected everywhere you go if you are like one of the minority that's true that's true that's very very true i don't think How that do you like deter you from traveling in general because like if you go somewhere like in in asia you're gonna get those looks 10 times more than you'll get in south america in general because they like what how can one how can you afford to come here and two like you don't look like you you know are from here so you kind of just have to like you know brush it off and enjoy like the experience of like being in a new culture but like, talking about asia have you guys like i'm just wondering have you noticed in asia so i know in particular asian countries like vietnam thailand etc like they're interested in like black men but the, the the thing is like how come the asian women in america don't really have that much uh interest in dating black men i've always just wondered that that's a good question. I think they're just trying to preserve their culture outside of because they're in a minority in the United States. So I don't think they I don't know. I actually don't know, but I'm just assuming maybe they just don't want to get bred out. But you're not going to breed them out in their own country, though. I mean, but the thing is, but they the thing is, Asian women definitely do date white men, though. In America, they definitely date white men. hundred percent. They whitening the skin, though. Like as oh, long as, they, as, long okay. as their skin is staying white. That's okay. Uh, Christopher sent a two dollar super chat, and then he sent a five dollar super chat, and then he sent another ten dollar super chat. What day and time are you going live again? Thank you for the super chats. Uh, I'm not sure. I may go live again, maybe Saturday or Sunday night. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure that I was just doing this for the last live stream of the month, but uh, yeah, white men will always worldwide. They'll be the exception. Yeah. I know I seen it like I would when I was in university. I'll see white guys <clears throat> who I'm like, yo, like they don't work out, no gym, nothing, and they have the baddest Asian girl. I'm like, what the this doesn't make any sense. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Let's see, we need some reactions or something, man. My whole uh live stream thrown up because B dub didn't come through and drop some gems for us. Yeah. No, I appreciate B dub. B dub is really is really smart. 
super super intelligent but i will say this uh i did some research on what we were talking about a minute ago and it says argentina has the second strongest passport in all of south america while uh chile is number four but there's inflation in argentina and chile is i wouldn't i don't think chile is so much like that i don't know though damn that's kind of crazy for it to be number four because i know chile's economy is strong so that's why I, um because i know like a lot of people who are um starting a business in santiago they even have like um like a startup companies where like they basically will pay you to to move out to sandy uh, santiago and invest in in a business they'll kind of like help you out with that yeah here in Argentina, place. yeah that's that's probably going to be like my long-term plan but i was since i'm already here in buenos aires i've been here for like almost five months so i was thinking like shit, i might as well stay here and ride out because i think it's only two years here that you need to stay for you to apply for um your like a uh, residency so i was like shit, i'm already here but you know i'm also thinking well i'm if i'm here but uh, there's a country right next door with a better economy you know i might as well look into that too again the reason i live in paraguay is because in the future it uh it has a lot of opportunity for investment it's easy to get a, a passport there and citizenship residency everything but uh it's central for that area you know you can fly to chile in three hours you can fly to buenos aires in like an hour i think it's like an hour you can fly to uh, montevideo in an hour you can fly to brazil in an hour bolivia in an hour i will also say too the the dating scene in buenos aires is is because i've seen like some of the videos uh you and um i forgot the other dude's name talking about like Jason. Uh, yeah dating in, in buenos aires and for me it shit is basically like how it was in medellin i don't know if it's basically because you know it's like type the type of women but the and then also i don't i don't necessarily go out to clubs and shit. i kind of just <laughs> go out to spots where i will want to meet a female at like cafes there's a shit ton of cafes out here so i go out there or they use there's usually like events where they're doing um like artistic events and all that other stuff so that's why i'm just like you know for me it's been pretty solid but i don't know if you know everybody else has been having like different experiences so what type of uh are you dealing i know they're mostly white there are you dealing with that or are you looking for the afro argentines my pr primarily black women you know which makes no sense being in buenos aires but um there's a lot of like uh i don't know if you want to call them like mix or afro argentine women but yeah. um there's also a lot of like arabic women here there's a lot of women that are from uh like different parts of the middle east you got different people from venezuela uh colombia and everything that's here too but they pretty much are all they 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 probably got like four or five dudes like in their you know on their phone because pretty much we all looking for the same thing kind of like a dark skin you know long black hair uh fit friendly feminine like that type you know, but they usually yeah. got a lot of options really yeah okay so maybe i wish my tinder would i might have circled back because my tinder would have been working i probably would have ran into a lot more chicks but my they my tinder wasn't right i wasn't getting any swipes when i was out there that shit just started working like two weeks ago to be honest with you bumble been coming in like bumble that's too. Been my, my my bumble been like the mvp and what i do is i don't set it on palermo because everybody who come to buenos aires they want to go to palermo or palermo hollywood and that's that shit is like going to poblado in in mm -hmm. medellin and I said it like somewhere that's on the outside of Palermo, like via Crespo or Recoleta or like places like that, where there are more uh, like native people who live there, like people who, you know, they pretty much gonna live and die in Buenos Aires. And they, you know, they don't really see a lot of tourism because they're not in Palermo. And so, I mean, I've been, I've been going on a date like maybe once every week and a half 
once every week, week and a half. And they've all basically been like the Moreno kind of like, you know, lighter, dark, like pretty much like lighter uh, brown skin. You know, they don't look like white people is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they look like the typical uh, Latino look. It basically, yeah, typical Latino look. But the only thing that I, I mean, one of the things that I really don't like about Argentina or Buenos Aires is the Latin culture is is a little bit like different. Like they just traded the Latin culture for European culture. So yeah, it's kind of like, you know, if you're looking for like an authentic Latina, like I understand Buenos Aires is in South America, but they act different. They act like they're from different. Yeah. So that's why it's like, if you kind of like to be immersed in Latin culture, finding someone from Argentina is, is going to be, you're going to be hard pressed to learn something new about Latin culture with the Argentinian woman. In my I, mean, I think because of the history, right? I think I, I'm not sure who, but there was a president or something like that, that started inviting all these, uh, all these like different European uh, nations to like settle in their, um, to settle in their country to, uh, to like basically it's called i forgot what it was to like to to like to remove the black or something like that i i, I researched about it they wanted to breed them out yeah breed them out yeah 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 so the guy was uh i forgot who it was was inviting different european nations italians etc to you know come and start breeding the the black out yeah yeah they they got a lot of that it's same same thing in portugal um at the same time you go to portugal they still got the goddamn statue yeah or, <laughs> where they was trying to like you know weed everybody out so yeah i mean unfortunately that's the history but shit there's history everywhere where it's you know something to do with us and weeding us out in general yeah yeah it's like that in brazil that's why brazil is so mixed like that yeah that's a, that's a, i think they also uh they also had like a racial hierarchy also in brazil i think in latin america in general they had like a racial hierarchy like i forgot but if you do research about it, it's really interesting yeah uh yeah they were a racial hierarchy which you know is yeah i know exactly what you're talking about there's no black people in the government in brazil yeah yeah not at all not at all also what did you do with your car any advice i still pay for my car the only bill i have in the states is my car and my insurance in my car so I was ready to get out of the states like immediately. I didn't want to go through the process of selling my car and all that, so I just let somebody else use it that I trust, and I just pay the bill. Um, Austin, let me ask you. But dating in Kenya, how like is it really? Is it really that good? Was it really that good? Because I didn't, I didn't uh, watch the, all your videos when they came to like Kenya yet. I still have to watch them because I'm, I'm fairly new. But it wasn't really that good yeah hell yeah it was that good that's what any anytime you see me stay somewhere for that long more than likely it's because of the women true true that's first yeah, and what you go back to, to kenya for sure and what like what you said before i think i was watching one of your live streams you said something about like or was it a video um you were you wanted to wait to an american woman or something like that and she she was like she was acting like you wanted to like do something to her Yo, that it's true in in America. It's like that. It's really like that in America. Like you could smile, they could be choosing at you. You could smile, wave. They're gonna be like, if they're with their friends, because it's over. With their with when they're with their friends, they're definitely gonna like start acting bougie. Yeah, they they'll they'll give you the signals and flip the script on you immediately. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know it happened to me so many, especially in uni. It happened to me so many times. You know that's why. I always prevented like to walk up to women with it with like in America if they have like a group of friends because if they're with a group of friends, the group of friends are judging you 100 percent That's yeah. what I think. I mean at the end of the day, like they only thing that they can really do is just try to gossip about you. But if anything, they just talking more about you. That's, that's true. Exactly what you want. That's true. That's true. Hey, Austin, would, would you prefer would you prefer females from from Kenya or Tanzania? Uh, uh, Kenya, absolutely, 
Absolutely, Kenya, because uh, they're they're more open minded. I mean, everything comes with a price. So in Kenya, they're like more free spirited, open minded. But that means you have a lot more women that are going to sleep around a lot. So if you ever want to get serious with somebody in Kenya, you're going to have a hard time. Really? Any, any dude that's been living in Kenya would tell you that, like, because to be honest with you, bro, um, I was telling somebody this. If you live in Kenya, like it, Nairobi is it. That That's it. Like Nakuru, all that. That's like places you go visit. Don't you wouldn't live, not no young man, not no. I don't think nobody under 35 will live in those other cities. If you go to my like people brag about my boss, I didn't see what they was bragging about. Like that, that was boring to me. So, so now, is there a place a, to, huh? I'm sorry, is there a place to find like an actual, like, like a serious relationship in Kenya or any any place in Africa, in your opinion? Yeah, out here in Africa as a whole, yeah, but. In Kenya, you would have to go. I had a local tell me that you would have to go find a chick in the village and be the one that brings her to the city. Because if you don't bring them to the if the, if you meet them in the city, it's pretty much too late. It's like a it's like them going to Miami. Wow. Like it's, it's over with. Wow. Wow. I did not know that. I did not know but that. I mean you can find a wife in any African country, but I'm gonna tell you like this: women pretty much cheat worldwide. Uh, I know. There's a reason why they had such harsh laws on women before. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I understand with whole, like religion as well too, because like yeah. uh, I'm Muslim, so I definitely I understand why because like yo, it's crazy, it's crazy. Hey, I appreciate y'all. I'm about to go ahead and head out, but I'm definitely going to be looking into um, your 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 content about Chile and everything like that because I'm thinking about uh, getting my residency either in Chile or or here. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, stay tuned because I'm gonna we've got we were supposed to be talking about that today with B Dub, but he's not here. So I guess if he does come through in the next hour, we'll talk about it. All right, no worries. All right, y'all take care. Also, right, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Austin. I appreciate this, man. For real, for real. I really appreciate this. Thank you. I'm glad you see the value in it, really. No, no. You're changing everyone's it. life. You're changing everyone's life with this content. This content, you're changing everyone's life. Like, people don't understand. Like, sometimes I feel like a lot of us young men that especially don't know about the passport and what the opportunities that are out there, like, you're missing out. We're missing out. We're missing out, you know? People think like America is just one bubble and you have to stay here for life. Like, nah, you don't gotta stay here for life. That's 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 crap. Yeah. Yeah, it's way more to the to the world than just the United States, and there's so many more benefits you get from leaving. Yeah. And also the food too. What you said about the thing is food. I was so much more like I would eat less and I was so much more full in Africa compared to America. When I'm in America. Cause I like you know I, you know work out and stuff like that. I would have to eat 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 to feel full. But in Africa, where I was at, I'll eat less and I was one hundred percent fine. Yeah. We got a uh, somebody just called in and he got off. But thank you so much, Austin. I'm gonna head out. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, man. No problem. God bless. You too. All right, you guys. So we are all alone now. I would drop another link if you guys want to call in. Otherwise, I'm kind of tired. Yeah, people don't want to watch. Uh, we expect less viewers when we're talking about finances or passports, something outside of women. But uh, the show was just slow because of B Dubs not being here. Let's see. Let's let's we know what to do in the meantime. Let's see what Terry Wilson doing. Terry Wilson. Live here, and I would literally get. But what about I pay off my rent in advance? Like if I live, I got if I go overseas, I got paid off a year. I got paid off for a whole year. I can't. 
I can't be wondering, you know, I don't like to wonder. I pay myself for the year. I pay myself a year off in advance. So if it's like three hundred dollars a month for a two bedroom, right? Or four hundred dollars a month for a two bedroom, I'll just pay it off at least ten months. You know what I mean? Even if I gotta go broke one month, I'll pay no. it off in the deal. It depends on how expensive it is. Like I'm sure the rent's probably like three hundred. Yeah. So I'll just pay it off for like, at least ten months. Like if I had it with me, I wouldn't pay for shit. She would pay for shit. What would she pay? Have my own spot, chilling, having a good time. And I think a date and a police officer will open up doors too. Like if I want to get residency, it'd be a lot easier to get it. It'd be a it'd be a whole lot easier to get it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. This this oh my goodness. This job is looking real real interesting right now. Yeah, so honestly, man, I don't know. I don't know. She sent me a photo. Yeah. Let me see what the photo is. Is that the uh, the cop? Yeah, let me see. She sent me a photo. Okay. So yeah, um blunt summarize. I apologize, Brad. Maybe I misspoke. Maybe I misspoke. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Man. That'd be the, that would be the only scenario that I could see myself living in in Colombia. In Colombia. If I was dating a cop. I'd have to date someone respectable. Like, I'd have to literally date with. So I couldn't just fuck with any random Colombian chick and want to move here. Like, I'd have to date someone respectable. Cops are fucking dicks. Don't get me wrong. But. That don't mean, you know, I don't know. I just want to. Ethan Abroad is your new channel, buddy? Yeah, I was trying to make something that, you know, people don't have. Because um, now when I try to search my name on YouTube, other people are popping up. So I had to change it. Yeah, that's how you got to do it, too. Yeah, so I, my, I buddy, my, my buddy Austin is a good guy. He said he knows best about all the countries. Yeah, he's been to a lot of countries. Like he has, you know, that's he's good source of resource uh, information because he's been to more, more more countries than most people. You know, like so he does know a good amount. If you if you live I, someplace for one month, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, man. If you live someplace for one month, that's still more than what most people in the world have lived. You know, because that's most people don't travel as much as Austin and and you. you know, that's that's a lot of traveling you guys do in one year. Yeah, I've been in nine different countries, man. I never thought I'd say that. I never thought I would say that in my life. Literally. I just thought the United States, if you couldn't get it there, you was fucked. You could never get it. Like, unless I thought if you couldn't date in the United States, you were screwed. There was nowhere else to go. You know what I mean? That was my mindset before I met Austin. And I was struggling, struggling, but the quality woman that I got was horrible. Oh my hood! Gang banging shit. Oh my hood. Gang banging shit. <laughs> White girls want to be black. My baby beat my baby daddy say you'll beat your ass. Oh my hood. Even though you're not from a hood. Oh my hood. You know what I mean? That bitch ass nigga. Oh my hood. Throwing it up. <laughs> Throwing it up. <laughs> and he be white girls throwing it too. Throwing it up. My baby daddy's OG says he'll beat your ass. And you know what he does? That nigga be pushing out mad stuff. He pushing out mad stuff. Gang gang shit all day. That's all we do. We all we're representing. You know what I mean? I'm representing the block. Oh, that's dumb ass shit like that, dude. <laughs> Just dumb ass shit like that. Ain't nobody, I don't give a fuck about your fucking. Yo, I'm not, look, these women in America, these white women too, what they'll do. If they live in the hood, they'll try to be black to impress the black man. They don't get ran through. You see why? That's what we, that was my dating in the, that's in Nebraska. That was my dating life in the United States. The women I was dealing with were fucking low quality. They're like women you would hit, you would take seriously. You'd always hear some stories about them. You know that one dude? He bro, he did some nasty shit to her. That's what you would hear. That's literally what you would hear. Like, girl, you would hear stories, but I'm like, oh man, she's like three dudes running, running, train on her. 
I'm just like, you're gross. And they be proud of it and shit. Like, who wants to deal with that? Who wants to deal with that? You know what I mean? Who wants to deal with that? I don't want to deal with that. You know what I mean? What do you think about that, Ethan? About the chicks in America or the white? Yeah, in Nebraska. America? So the thing is, where I live is much is much different than where you live. I live in like a more metropolitan city, so it was more you know white white girls would be white, black chicks would be white. Not really that much mixture um, in terms of the way people act. So it's just very you know very kind of like people act the way they act because of their race and they're you know, they're just one way. It wasn't like black white chicks trying to be white. Uh, why are you trying to be black? It was more like people are just who they are, you know. Yeah. I liked it because it was pretty. It was pretty, you know, diverse. Like you go, you can easily, you know, get a white girl. Um, it was, you know, pretty. It's easy to, to. It was pretty easy to get a girl because there were so many options. People were, you know, interacting with each other and stuff like that. So it was, you know, not too difficult to get a to get a girl, you know, where I live. So. And you know, you know what the crazy part about all of this is, man. Traveling overseas really changed my life. Like, just, just so many options to explore, so many things to do. The possibilities are endless, and there's not much they can do about it no more. I'm gonna switch phones. Did I? Did this phone die? Yeah, this phone must have died. Yeah, it to us. Somebody else on the panel? No. All right, so we got a uh, learn crypto TV on the panel. What's going on? Now, what's going on with your young brother family? What's good? Nothing much, man. Nothing much. Sleepy, sleepy. I got it beat up, flaked on me today, man. We supposed to talk about some productive stuff. No doubt. Well, shoot, that's what the part I came in on. I heard production and then I heard you talk about residency. So I was like, well, yeah, and I heard a couple of other uh, lives that you had going on for the last few days here yeah, with the guy, the spirited guy, I forget his name, um, um, the dude that be traveling everywhere, I guess, because he, he sound like he know what he's talking about. <clears throat> I can't remember the dude's name. Anyway. OK. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Beat up. Um, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, yeah, it sounds like he know what he be talking about or whatever, but he be talking down on people. I don't know why would he want to do that? You know, everybody in different stations in life, you know what yeah. I mean? So everybody not going to be capable of uh, being able to digest everything that he's saying. So, you know, I think he got to remember that when he's talking to people. But anyway, <laughs> to, uh yeah, man, let me add a little bit of uh, sauce to what you got going on here. You know, um, for those of um whom y'all don't know who I am, man, I'm I also live in Colombia. Uh, you know, I started my transition back in 2021, but I've been I was traveling. Uh, I've been to six different countries, but um, I've been when I got to Colombia, I just fell fell in love there, you know, and uh, got my situation set up there. But I've been doing that since 2019, going to there into Colombia. But you know, I actually moved there in 2021 but anyway i'm um about 18 months out from getting um my permanent resident status in colombia but mine came via marriage and i know that a lot of your listeners are, are people that follow you you know what i mean in your guys in your age bracket because i'm for i'll be 44 next friday yeah next friday i'll be 44 so uh a lot of get young young men who listen to you they around in your age group 29 and below and stuff like that so i know marriage <laughs> is not kind of what's on y'all mind because y'all exploring your options and i know that's what you putting out there for sure explore your options before you make a final decision and there's nothing wrong with that as a young man but i heard some people say they thinking about moving outside of the united states now i think that Everybody has to understand the magnitude of that move. What Austin did, it looked easy from his situation. It looked easy, but it ain't easy. And he's been telling y'all that for weeks and months. That is not easy because the very first thing that you need is income. If you don't have any income, 
you're not going to survive outside of the United States if that's where you're from. You need to have income. And that is the most important thing outside of your safety. Um, Because those are the top two things, income and safety. If you can figure those two things out, then everything else becomes a little bit more easier. And now you can figure out your lifestyle and which country now fits your lifestyle. The other reason why I've been paying attention to what you got going on is because I'm one of those individuals that like to go out of the way. And Uruguay, Paraguay, and Chile was three countries that you've touched that I definitely want to get to and will get to. Um, you know, specifically Santiago, and there's a um, I think the city starts with an A, um, up in the northern region of Chile. That's where all the black people are. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I done some research. I had done research a uh, year about a year and a half ago about it because I was really trying to get down there. But uh, that's where they are up that towards the top of Chile. But anyhow, that's why I follow your content to get more information. But um, but let me start rambling about that to get to straight to the point about the residency. These couple of points that I had. So so gentlemen, the ones that you are listening, some of you follow Austin because of his first encounter with Brazil. Brazil has a golden visa program that offer residencies to foreign nationals. But you have to do that by way of investment, primarily in real estate. So if you are one of those individuals who have means and can invest via real estate, then Brazil has a golden visa program that offers that type of residency for you in South America. Most countries in South America, they have a investment program that's going to require a minimum of about thirty thousand dollars in a local business or a real estate investment, say a condo, apartment building, you know, maybe a, I don't know, a, a restaurant, a pharmacy, I don't know, barbershop, whatever. And then that, excuse me, will help to gain a proof of residency for that country, you know, under, under visa status in most countries in South America. And then you also have uh, like Peru, they offer citizenship for two years after living in that country, after living in, excuse me, after living in the country for two years, they offer that same thing. Um, but there you have to learn the language. You have to learn Spanish. That's one of the kickers there in Peru, Ecuador. They offer permanent residency, but you have to be a retiree. I know that there's some retirees that listen to Austin because I've seen that, too, especially when he was over in Africa. Ecuador offers that at eight hundred. $800 a month. If you can show that in your retirement, you can get permanent residency in the country of Ecuador or there, but also consider taxes, consider your potential for residency in these places, your quality of life that matches um, the country and how you like to live. But more importantly from y'all, you got to consider the investment route. So that's pretty much what I want to add to the sauce as far as you know information f is for your uh, uh for your listeners and through my experience you know because i have mines in a couple years in, in in less than two years so you know and then i'll be working on another they have a digital residency you guys they do you know if you're interested in investing in crypto without borders i mean without restrictions they have that too digital residency you elaborate on that so there's a uh, if you if you uh, take down this website for the people it's rns.id rns.id all right that's uh it's a citizenship called Paolo digital citizen now this is more towards when you have to verify um, residency um, when you're doing different investments to where you can move uh, so you can uh take advantage of the loopholes via tax taxes and also uh, I, uh, verification of identity identity so that's what RNS ID that digital uh, residency that's what that'll allow you to be able to do primarily so um, and I'm and those are the people that you know trade you know you 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 involved in um, different type of investments that makes you large six-figure income and stuff this here be something that'll be you know or, or digital nomads you know, it'll be uh, beneficial for some or beneficial for something to you to look into. 
you know, and if you like me and you invest in crypto, definitely want to look into that because they have processes called KYC. It's called know your customer. And this right here, that digital identification will help you to be able to pass through most of those and allow you to have access to different exchanges that you can't have access to as an American citizen. Yeah, I didn't know. I never heard of an investment visa. Yeah, man. Investment visas in every pretty much every country in South America. You just have to look it up. Those are they have different visa types in Colombia specifically. I know, but it's going to be a little bit more pricier in Colombia. And a lot of individuals probably don't even need to be thinking about getting an investment visa in Colombia at this particular moment in time. But that's the option is there if you're an individual that, uh, you know, has experience and um, know what you're doing, you know, uh, stuff like that. But, yeah, it's going to cost you about good 70, 80 grand in Colombia for that type of visa. And they more than likely they're probably going to do away with it, you know, considering stuff because they do make adjustments to these different visas. But they have a digital nomad visa in Colombia that you can obtain, and that's for two years. And that two-year visa, all you have to show is that you make eight hundred and sixty-four uh, no, seven hundred and sixty-four dollars a month, and amongst a few other factors, and you can get the digital nomad visa. So if you are a uh, person that owns an LLC business and you have financials uh, from your banking business banking account that can show. I don't know, six months of our income into that bank account, six months to six to 12 months, I'll say, and, uh, you know, have uh, health insurance um, for certain, um, have a valid passport, obviously, no criminal record, and then you'll probably more than likely get the digital nomad visa in Colombia. Really? So, yeah, but they're different types, man. Yeah. Certain, yeah. Black Scorpion, yeah. thank you for the five dollars super chat. Uh, yeah, okay. I guess I have heard of an investment visa. I guess I'm just looking at what you're showing me on this website. Uh, this investment visa, I didn't know about this type of thing. I had to do some more research on this tonight. You you on the rns.id? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the digital visa. That's a digital visa. A digital residency. Everything is legitimate there, you know, but it helps more. That's what I was saying. It helps more the investor. You know, you can use this as a residency for any, any, anything, pretty much. You know, but uh, this is just something to add to your um repertoire. And those of you who are interested in crypto, if you own a couple of Bitcoin. You know, and you can invest that off up into um, the country of El Salvador. El Salvador will give you a uh, permanent residence there, too, as well. If you have if you own some Bitcoin, too. Really? See, what I, is the requirement? I heard you say you was going to El Salvador, man. If you, if you ever get over what for 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 um, El Salvador. Yeah. Yeah. You, just need, <clears throat> you need to be able to own. You need to own two. I think it's two or three, unless they changed it from the last time. I know it was two Bitcoin, and you two, and you are basically what is called staking. Staking is basically a term for you know, a layman's term for um, earning yield on your um, digital asset. So if you stake your Bitcoin with the country in their um, in their uh, what do you say, treasury, then they'll grant they'll give you uh, residence in the country they have a they got they got a they got a uh, area called bitcoin beach you know in el salvador i heard you say you was gonna go there you should check it out man i'm trying to make my way over there because i gotta get learn crypto tv on that but bitcoin beach yeah bitcoin and beach. el salvador is one of the leading countries yeah bitcoin beach el salvador is one of the leading countries in chain as a matter of fact when you get there you're going to see that all across the country um they accept bitcoin as a form of payment because it is it is a uh they may they uh legalize it as a form of currency in the country so you can buy buy and sell and trade with bitcoin there anywhere or those of or the people who accept it but you'll see it when you get there or whenever I you believe go arrive. Bitcoin was big in bolivia too 
So I've seen a few places yeah. in Bolivia that the entire building had a Bitcoin sign on it and it had an ATM and all that stuff inside of there. Seriously. Yeah. How many other countries you've been to and you seen and you and you seen um you know a large cryptocurrency presence? That's the only one I think. Or I've at least seen. some cryptocurrency currency presence. Just yeah. in Bolivia? No, nothing in Brazil because Brazil has the largest bank, new bank in Brazil. Um, I think it's based in Sao Paulo, I want to believe. And um, they, they, that's a crypto bank. Crypto, yeah, it's a crypto bank. Yeah, new bank, N U B A N K. Somebody in the chat gonna look it up to try to prove me wrong. So. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I heard it. They, they, they are custody digital assets. Yeah. So, but yeah, man. Um, but I, I'm surprised that you say you didn't see that in Brazil because Brazil is one of the lead. Argentina as well. The president they just elected that president is Bitcoin focused as well. So, you know, I'm surprised that you say that about Brazil, though, because Brazil is one of the largest countries in South America for uh, for um, cryptocurrency transactions. Yeah, I was uh, but I was in Salvador and Rio and his sea face. So I don't think those maybe Rio may have had it, but those other places, most likely not like I don't see Salvador getting that. Salvador is a little more laid back. I know Sao Paulo is more the business oriented city in brazil word word well i mean eventually it'll make it its way across everywhere because it's it's, it's a worldwide system that they're trying to implement the swift system the old financial messaging system that's what some place already been it already been replaced with the iso standard there's a st number of standards that they go by financial uh, the financial messaging is two zero zero two two but anyway, um, not the, I'm not trying to go all that deep like that. But anyway, um, people will start seeing it around. But the, the adoption, like you said, said, it'll be slow in some areas. And I'm sure in an area such as Salvador uh, um, or, you know, other areas across in other cities and countries in South America, Central America, um, you know, it'll be the same way. But um, eventually it'll make its way to the mass on a, a large scale. But uh yeah, man. Uh, so shoot, that's interesting. That make that make me want to go check out Bolivia now, just to go see that. Yeah, they had that in Bolivia, but Bolivia was sure. it was a nice city, but man, it was super underdeveloped. Like it was just a fifteen minute radius. All that little area I was recording it looked all nice and put together. That was all a fifteen minute radius, and outside of that, that it was like a shithole. Mm. Yeah, and I <laughs> had to call it shithole, you but that's exactly what it looked like. <laughs> you didn't see anything in Europe? Mm, I believe I may have in Poland. I think Poland is more likely to have that in Romania. Mm. Now what no. about Africa? Absolutely not. Because in Nigeria, um, you, you didn't go to Nigeria, did you? No, nah, that's one of the, the countries that Ethiopia, South Africa, those are three countries I never made it to that everybody wanted me to go to. Is it did they have uh like travel um advisory against it? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's I don't think it's that deep. Uh just like they have a travel advisory for Tanzania for terrorism, and you don't see a bit of that. Unless if you're on the borders, because if you read the the advisory and you read the stories they have, it's talking about bordering with Mozambique and like Uganda, I believe. Hmm. Interesting. Now, the reason why I ask is because I know, you know, just in my research on a day to day basis, I, I hear Africa and their, um, you know, and how they're being how cryptocurrency is being used over there in those areas so you know since you've been over there in them areas then you know i was wondering if you ever even saw it so i've never been on that side of the planet everything i've done has been in the caribbean mexico central america and south america <laughs> so i don't have that experience to talk about it but it uh interesting to know you know i only have uh i really only want to go over there to that side of the world to visit um israel and um you know shucks and maybe man i don't even really have a desire to go to thailand to be honest but everybody keeps saying just go for one time just to have the experience but it's all kind of like dominican republic to me i can go 
but I don't really I, I can I don't want to go. You know what I'm saying? It's not. I'm, I don't feel like I'm missing anything there. That and the minister. Like I wouldn't see that place being life changing. Hmm. I think Africa, South America might be the life changing places for people. Like South America, if you're coming from the United States, the culture in South America will be life changing. And being in Africa, I think the experience of being around Black people at living, at, well, let's say East Africa, Black li people living in that amount of peace. You know, I, I don't think I've seen an actual fist fight the entire time I was in the entire four months that I was in East Africa. And we know in the United States, it don't it don't take that mm -hmm. long to see a fist fight between us. So uh, <laughs> it, it's not going to take you too long to, to say to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, can't say that about Colombia either. So. <laughs> But uh, what about West Africa? You ever think about going back to go over there, places like Sierra Leone and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, but man, I gotta get an African passport when I go want to go. Like, I might go back to Ghana and get their passport, but an African passport, from my understanding, is almost useless. Like, a uh, any of those green passports, uh, Ghana, Nigeria, it's almost better to like. Well, Nigeria is the worst. But I think Ghana is good as far as if you want to travel around Africa, that's the one you want. But outside of Africa, I don't think. Let me look up what countries do Ghanaians. So, so it's not it's not beneficial to have an African passport. So, because I was going to tell you guys, everybody else in the chat, listen, if you do that African ancestry DNA, and uh, you trace your lineage back to Africa. You know, I think that they offer, you know, citizenship to those individuals when you go back to visit the country that your bloodline is from. Yeah, so yeah, they my do cousin. They, so yeah, so I mean that'll be a way for people to get a residency in another country too as well. Yeah, it it is, but uh, looking at this chart or this map, I should say. Like it's showing right here that the uh oh let me switch like it's beneficial to get a, a most african passports are beneficial throughout africa and maybe some places like thailand or something like that but like when you compare it to like a nicaraguan passport where you can pretty much get anywhere visa free but the united states and maybe canada it's not really comparable uh mm. like we Visa on arrival here, visa free access. So if you have a Ghanaian passport, you, you can pretty much go to the whole Africa except for Morocco, it looks like. Hmm. But it had it had some more. Hold on. Okay, it just showed me a full picture. We were showing the whole world, but let me go back and find a different picture there. Man, you know what? One thing I wanted to ask, though, <laughs> this is just for my own in my own brain. Do they really have rapid tests over there for them chicks? HIV tests? Yeah. 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 A few have made me take it before. Wow. Yeah. So it's saying. Wow. Uh, so like you can go to the pharmacy, go to the pharmacy buy it over the counter make a chick take it right there and then how long it take for you to find out the result a few seconds uh, i did it a few times i, I had a few oh chicks do it to me and then i i got it a few times uh like especially if i got drunk and i fucking went raw like i go get an hiv test Oof. and test both of us to see if i fucked up Oof. but uh yeah you just stick your finger Oof. and then Squeeze the blood on the little thing, and yeah. Ooh, I don't know if I could live like that, man. Oh my gosh. I don't think HIV, uh, God forbid, nah. but I don't think it's as bad uh, as they may portray it. Because I mean, I can I ride with know. that. I can ride with that statement, but it's just the fact of knowing that if you're going to be engaged in the activity. 
that you, in my mind, is going to be like, I got to do this every time. You know what I'm saying? Or if I do it the one or two times, it's going to be with the same female. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that in my mind, and for me, I don't know if I could do that. But then again, at the same time, I guess it really wouldn't make a difference if you dealing with females and not testing them either at the same time. So, but I don't know. I guess it's I guess it's just knowing <laughs> that you can go buy a fucking rapid test over the counter in in a place to what supposedly is known for this. They need to have that shit in a lot of countries then. Uh, you can usually tell if a person has something that's what, which I would agree, but there's some things that you probably can't tell that lie dormant uh, for a while. But yes, I know HIV doesn't immediately show up. But the thing is, if she has HIV uh, that is detectable, I'll be able to know. Like when I would say, oh, I went in her raw, I'm not, I'm, I need to go get an HIV test. I'm testing her, not me. I'm going to test her and then I'm going to test myself again in two weeks. And you say you did that like twice, three times. Uh, I had the first time I had it happen. It was a chicken Ghana, not Ghana, Uganda that uh, I was taken back to the house and she stopped by the pharmacy and I didn't know what she picked up and we got inside. She's like, I need you to take this test first. And yeah, I had that happen a couple other times, but she put me on game. I was like, shit, I didn't even know you could get those out of there. So I started buying yeah, them. Yeah, that's why I'm asking, man. I didn't think it was true. I didn't know it was true, and I ain't never heard you talk about it. So um, yeah, that's what I was wondering. But I mean, I, I guess the good thing is, is you know your status. I know that shit. So I guess that's the good thing about it. So I just got my blood tested uh, again yesterday. Then, yeah. So you travel with them now? No, I went to the doctor. Uh, so I was telling people yesterday, I paid a hundred and eighty, a hundred and sixty dollars for a damn test. But I wasn't just testing them. I got STD testing, but I was testing like, and I know I don't need it, but I was testing like my testosterone levels and a bunch of other. Right. I was just doing like a full blood test. And so chlamydia, HIV, all that stuff was on there too. Uh, they were supposed to send me my no results. Doubt. Kevin, so, but I, I test because hey. sometimes I do fuck up. Uh, I gotta quit drinking when I'm about to fuck. So, uh, hey, sometimes. young man, right there, right there. This is probably the 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 most the best information you could get on on this live tonight. Right there, what he just told you. You know what I'm saying? So if you're gonna be around here traveling. And you're looking for these females out here in these streets like this, then you need to get your ass tested out here on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. You know what I mean? Because uh he at least he being honest and open with you and let you know sometimes he slip up. And that ain't and that's go across the board because there's some people out here that just straight up do it and they don't care. You know what I'm saying? And then you got the people that fall in the category like Austin just said, I might get drunk and, and just be in the moment and not thinking and just going with the flow. I understand that too, because I done been down that road too. And then you got the other ones, you know what I'm saying, who want to wife up somebody that they don't know. So they give them the trust and now you stuck. You know what I'm saying? But see, you know, if you're going to be doing all of these type of things like that, man, then you need to be getting yourself checked out. It's just, just bottom line to it. Because you don't know these people out in the streets like that. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Straight up and down. But, but uh, Another thing is, somebody going to say, Austin, you might need to remain silent on this subject. Listen, are they going to take me to jail because I said I got an HIV test? Like, <laughs> what, 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 what damage could I be doing? What damage could I be doing to myself by saying I'm keeping up with my health? <laughs> <laughs> you know, whenever I remember when I first got tested, uh, in, in uh, not first, but when I got tested the first time outside of the states, I was in Cambodia and I was telling my homeboy, like, Yeah, you know, I'm a, it's like, make sure you keep that to yourself. I mean, you don't have to plaster it all over the internet, but how is that? How is somebody gonna use that against you? That you, well, that's the same thing as like the dudes that look at porn, right? 
them porn stars, they got to get tested every time before they even do a scene. You know what I'm saying? And that's publicly known information. And y'all, yeah. a lot of y'all that's in the chat right now, look at porn. Yeah. Stop looking at porn. I stopped looking at porn. I, I got to so, reset my brain to be more affectionate. <laughs> <clears throat> man the whole moral of the story is the fact that you need to be taking care of yourself that's the moral of the story so you know um if you ain't doing that and you out here willy-nilly in it, i need you to remember one thing there's a lot of other dudes out here willy-nilly in it too exactly and that's with exactly the why that's out, with the same, yeah with the same people that's out there every day i seen it you know what i'm saying and see me being based in cartagena i see i when i first moved to columbia I lived in Bogota for two years, two years. And during that two year period, when I was living in Bogota, I experienced Cali, went there. I've been to Cali four times, um, been to Choco, in Ke to Choco, the state of Choco, the capital is Quito, the, the city, the city. Been there, um, uh, shoot, have been to a lot of little small towns, you know what I'm saying, around, took a bath in the river, in Guacamayel, in the banana zone. Uh, I did a lot of stuff, man. You know, experience around there. But, uh, yeah. Seeing a lot of, seeing a lot of the stuff that's been going on with the people who travel for one specific purpose. I see when every time I go out there, the same ones that's out there on the corners. So my point is, is that if I see the same ones on a recurring basis, whenever I step out and go outside, and she's doing this on her week to week, day to day, month to month basis. You know what I'm saying? How many dudes has this person dealt with? And then how many of them dudes then, you know what I'm saying, slipped up, quote unquote, such as what Austin said. You see what I'm saying? So y'all got to consider this when y'all out here in these streets out there doing that type of thing. This is actually a live stream topic by itself. We're going to do a whole live stream topic about this. I'm going to give you a story. Uh, uh, whenever I was, I'm going to call it STDs and traveling. Uh, whenever i was in pataya you know the basically the prostitution capital of the world we were in this place and i just got a drink dude went upstairs with this chick and uh he came downstairs after about 45 minutes it was like yeah i hit her raw and i was like Nigga, you hit that bitch raw so you know it's like this is like the like bro you don't first of all you don't think everybody else did that before like and you these dudes when dudes are going to places like that they go and sleep with a bunch of prostitutes so nobody knows who has what like if you catch something and you one of those guys that go pataya that sleep with two prostitutes a day in 14 days 28 girls if you catch something, you don't even know where to start. So, exactly, you that's wrong. You don't, point. Even know, you don't know if she didn't ran into that dude. And and then dudes are and people ain't saying that now. You're like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't think because because the stuff, the epidemic that's going on in Houston with them girls with that syphilis or whoever with the syphilis. How you think it spread it? People weren't saying nothing. Yeah, and then another thing too is uh, you got to think about when you catch a, S a STI like chlamydia. That means she literally been fucking just like wild because it doesn't take long for that to show symptoms. So mm -hmm. either you're sticking your dick in whatever or are you just dealing with a chick that's out there and you never know what somebody's doing straight up and you can always go to sleep you'll be Real let talk. me tell you you'll be stress-free wearing condoms real talk and literally i mean you need to be blowing a damn balloon out of the condom like not blow don't put your mouth on it <laughs> but what i'm saying is like somehow you know show that there's no hole in the damn condom 
that way you know for a fact you ain't got nothing to worry about. Man, I tell you what, you know, the 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 <laughs> I, I just you know what I'm saying because like I said you can't you, you you can't tell nobody what to do when they're out there you can't tell nobody how to um, move around but what you can do is tell people to watch out for other people's safety man you know what I'm saying including your own you feel me so I ain't in here trying to tell nobody how to spend your money and how to do nothing and do what you do and, and what you're traveling for and no nah, because I don't give a damn you know what I'm saying I'm a, I've been like I told y'all at the top of when I came on here I've been doing this for five years already you know what I'm saying so <laughs> shoot. And most people that's in your chat don't even know who I am. You know what I'm saying? So uh, my thing is, is that because we all black men, you know, I feel that it's one of my duties to help uplift, you know what I mean? The younger generation, you know, and provide y'all with some uplift on scenarios or real scenarios that you can encounter when you are in these streets, man. Listen, man, let me tell you, I'm going to tell y'all something real. I don't talk about this, you know what I'm saying, with people. You know, while I was in Bogota during my two years, I was homeless for 30, for 30, for, well, about 45 days, homeless. You know what I'm saying? Like, and what I would consider homeless is, like, I don't have nothing of my own to go to. Now, I wasn't on no street homeless, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, sleeping on no damn concrete because I had me another little chick, you know what I'm saying, that I was dealing with out there. But, you know, imagine being under the power of somebody who can tell you, get out my shit at any time. And I'm in a different culture of, you know, places. And then the chick, one of the chicks that I was one of the chicks that I was dealing with, you know what I mean, was about that life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she was really about that life, but she still was in the meat. You know what I mean? Enough to not let me be on the street. You know what I'm saying? It was like this to the point to where when I when I finally got my crib, my second crib when I was there. Because what I did when I first got to Bogota was I paid. Oh, yeah, this is another strategy that y'all can use. Right. If you're looking to relocate, save up enough money for a year. OK, when I first relocated to Bogota, I uh, paid five thousand dollars up front. So what I did was went on Airbnb and I found I, I got all the amenities that I needed. Washing machine. I needed at least a couple of rooms, a couple bathrooms, you know, because I knew I was going to be inviting people to come holler at me and stuff like that. So, you know, and I found like six properties based off of everything that I needed. And then what I did was on Airbnb, you can't leave no emails or phone numbers. So what I did was re sent, uh, I drafted an email, same email, and I sent it out to all six of the owners on Airbnb. But I spelled out my phone number. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if it was 654, I spelled out S-I-X, um, F-I-V-E, you know, like that, you know. And then one one of the people hit me back, you know, and I asked her if she was willing to do an offline negotiation off of, off of our Airbnb. How much would you be willing to take up front everything in order for me to be able to rent this apartment? And she told me the number and it was five thousand and I got it for ten and a half months. So five thousand dollars up front, ten and a half months. So I had me an entire year because I left March 18th, 2021 from that time. And when I got that, when I got to um uh bogota you know and i the remainder of the year so you know what i came into the problem was when it was that transition time when my um lease was up i paid for an extra couple of weeks but what i ran into because what i didn't know is how to rent properties at that time in colombia so i ran into the issue one of the one of the, well the main issue was i had two properties where in america where you would think you can just get properties and put them on hold or somebody will hold them for you in 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 colombia nah <laughs> if you want the apartment you need to pay for it right now you know what i'm saying it ain't ain't no wait because when i i had to leave, i left and because i got i found me a remote job i work in it came back to tampa took the drug test when i got back hit up both of the apartments both of them the people told me that they had already rented them so that's what landed me in a position where i didn't have anywhere to go because i thought when i came back by me lining up two options at least one of them would be available and neither one of them worked so and that's how i landed in that position what was what's your point of saying this crypto because 
if you're going to make a move outside the country, you need to be prepared to encounter the unexpected. You need to be ready for that. If I didn't have contacts, if I didn't have a source of income, I would have been really up the creek without a paddle in a foreign country with no money. Really on the street, I would have been having to do what Jay Rello had to do, beg for help. But if you don't want to embarrass yourself that bad, you can always make yourself to the American embassy in whatever country you're in and they'll help you. But it's going to be on a promissory note. All right. So that's your fail safe. Just in case y'all guys didn't know, you can always make your way to the American embassy, get assistance financially. But it's going to be on a promissory note. If you don't have the money to move around and get back the way you need to go. Most people don't know that. OK, so I just gave you a nugget. So if you find yourself in a situation in a fail in a fail clutch, that's how you get. You got to get to the country's capital to where the American embassy is in Colombia. There's an embassy in Barranquilla. There's an embassy in Bogota, which is the main one. So but uh, yeah, man, um, I, 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 I got past that situation, you know, um, found me a place to stay. Uh, and then the rest, the rest was written, but you know, um, these are the, these are the situations that you have to understand that you can find yourself in. If you are not prepared to make this move, y'all watching Austin and Austin moving around and he making this shit look real easy, but y'all don't see what Austin encounters on a day to day basis when he moving in these countries like that. So take Take it with a grain of salt and just know because Austin cannot he there's no way he can tell you everything because he hasn't experienced everything just yet. And the fact that he's moving to cut from country to country to um, me, he's going to have different encounters in these different countries and not everybody's going to respond the same way in these different. That's why you see Floyd getting frustrated because he's looking for it to be all straight line. He looking at it, I'm American, and this is how it should be. He looking at it from that perspective, and that's the wrong way to look at it. You and these people country, they don't need to cater to you. You need to adjust and adapt to their scenario and their culture. It's your job to do the adjusting and adapting. So this is the biggest problem with Floyd, in my opinion. But, you know, he kind of he kind of hard headed and he got to learn the hard way sometimes. You know, hopefully nothing happens to him. And he remains safe. So the fact that he says he's scary is going to help him. But these are the distinct differences between Austin and Floyd. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you're looking at him travel. But Austin, yeah, making it look Floyd easy for y'all. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> hey, I hope nothing happened to the brother, man. I really do. You know, because, uh, you know, the way and then uh, the way he be talking to people sometimes, I. Uh, Feel like um that's how I know he be he got that American attitude when he be talking to people, Bruh, Man, these people don't care nothing about that shit. You know what I'm saying they don't give a fuck because you American. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, I had to learn that. Shoot, I almost got I almost had to drop somebody for calling me a gringo for not me not understanding that that's what I am. <laughs> I'm fucking yeah. gringo. I'm a foreigner. You know what I'm saying? And it was and it wasn't meant as no bad term because they calling you a gringo. I'm I'm a foreigner in their country. You know what I'm saying? But I was upset at the fact that the dude was saying it all out loud. Oh, they go the gringo. He said it in, and I'm in the neighbor and I'm in the neighborhood where there ain't no there are no gringos. You know what I'm saying? So why are you announcing to everybody on the fucking block that the gringo here? You know what I'm saying? I don't know who the fuck these people are who watching me. I don't know that. So I had to check this dude, but my family told me, you know what I'm saying, to calm down because they didn't mean nothing by it. And that was enough. See, like a scenario like that. I had to learn trial by fire. You know, so when you moving around in these countries, family, you know, just realize that there could be some scenarios that you can encounter and you're going to have to have some uh, a little bit of um, street wisdom in order to be able to uh, maneuver yourself out of them. Oh, yeah. Have you been shook down in any of these countries, Austin? Nah, well, no, nah, not Rob. No, I just got no, no, no. I'm talking about by the cops, by the cops. Yeah, but they didn't take nothing. Okay. Okay. Because that's a real thing, too. I, that happened to me three times. 
Okay. Two times I had to pay. We had to pay it. Well, I had to pay my way out of one situation. The group I was with, um, I got the dude who didn't have his identification to pay to get out the situation, get out the situation. And then another time they just, uh, you know, was patting me down, you know what I'm saying? Trying to see what I was doing and what I was going. So. Yeah. Yeah. I told Floyd about the whole American thing. I, I've been telling him about that for two years. He still, he is seen. I haven't heard him say it since we've been in Colombia, but he has before just been like, Oh, you know, like, well, I, I think, and I'm going to say this here because it was on the video. Uh, when we were talking to the chick from uh, the Dutch chick from the Netherlands, she was like, uh, I don't know if I should hand you my phone. He's like, don't worry. We're not going to take your phone. We American. And I was like, mm, they still phones in America. You know, that's not, that's, you know, people do steal phones in America. See, but that, that doesn't come off in a very good light when you say that, especially because Americans have that stigma that we do think we're above everybody. So when you when you display that, it doesn't give you points at all. It actually takes some points down. You know, because these people can care less that you're American in the in the fact of our uh, in the fact of um pride uh, country pride, or uh, you know what I'm saying or where they from. I don't care. You know what I'm saying about any of that. So like, and you can see this via sports. You know, they don't care nothing about no NFL. They don't care nothing about no NBA. They don't, none of the stuff that people that the Americans care about sports wise in these other countries, Central and South America, they do not care about none of that stuff. They can care less, you know. So that's why when you come to the countries and y'all looking for sports bars that's playing it, it got to be somebody who American who own an American establishment in order for you to find it, you know. Because these people are not looking at that kind of stuff over there. They might look at the Super Bowl because that's a worldwide thing or the World Series, you know, that play in other countries on, on their uh, uh, regular normal television um, uh, outlets. But outside of that, the big games, you're not seeing no regular season game nowhere in no country outside of America. It's not happening. You know what I'm saying? The culture is totally different. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I mean the most, the closest you'll see to a sports bar is a sports bar for football, uh, soccer, that type of football. Right, right, because that's the number one sport in the world, whether people realize it or not, or know it or not. Football yeah. is the, the real football; is <laughs> the number one sport in the world. That's why when the World Cup is going on, everybody around the world is paying attention to it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You, you call out what a footballer now is either going to be uh, Ronaldo or Messi. Everybody know this, like Pele, you know, and all these other uh, uh, other uh, great soccer players that was in effect, you know. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, yeah, man. So, shoot. Hey, you still in Colombia? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be in Medellin at least until Monday. Oh, okay. Shoot, man. Well, I'm saying I'll be in um, Bogota Saturday and uh, and then I'll be in Cartagena the rest of my time there, you know, unless I float down the way, down Highway 90 over there to Santa Marta. But um, uh, I don't do too much. I don't do too much moving around in Medellin like that. You know, I got I got a couple of folks over in Medellin, though. But What do you think of Medellin? I mean, for me, for me, Medellin is nothing more than a vacation city. That's you what know. I was telling people. It's Disneyland. Yeah, it's uh, you know, you know they got a theme park there. You do know that. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, Medellin got a theme park there, man. You been to Commuter Thirteen yet? Yeah, I was there yesterday. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, you get some good good pictures over there in Commuter Thirteen. Um, shoot, what else? Uh, you know, La Tenta. This is an area that you can go to. Uh that is not tourists inundated with tourists you're gonna be more of the local culture you still need to be careful over there um simply because you know um the way that things are but that's a place that you can go to over there in in, in medellin that you can get uh, more of a local feel uh you know i wouldn't recommend too many other places around there especially not on this uh, live you know because uh it'll be more of a personal conversation and uh, definitely have to be riding around with somebody you know. You know, so I got a couple contacts to take you to these places. But you know what I'm saying? It ain't. It's nothing that I would definitely feel comfortable discussing 
over your platform. You know, I don't do that. Um, you know, but anyway, this here give you opportunity to see Medellin that people ain't filming and ain't going. This is what I'm talking about, like that in a safe in a safe situation. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So, yeah. um, but uh, and then you got uh, Guatape. You ever heard of Guatape? Yeah, I went there. Okay. Um, and then what else? You know, they got gun ranges out there, Medellin. You can go uh, four wheeling out there. Um, you know, uh, think that you can do a, it's a, it's a, it's a mountain climb you can do, something like that, mountain climb. Uh, what else? Uh, I'm thinking of all the things that you can do that's just out of the way that you, that you ain't gonna be having to run into no BS that you can still enjoy. Uh, you know, you could definitely go over there in Provenza and, and, and Poblado over there. You know, I mean, hell, you in Medellin, you might as well. You know what I'm saying? You, and look and look at the stuff over there. You ain't necessarily got to touch, but I'm sure you probably already done did that already. Um, yeah, that gets old. Yeah, Invergado, you can go out there. Sabanetta, you can go out there. You know, it's really everything all in the outskirts, man. And, and you know, and you know, and doing the doing the things. Uh, the uh the tourist stuff or the local the, the stuff that the local people do you know catch a if you catch a concert in medellin that'll be a good experience too if you can catch a soccer game um in medellin that'll definitely be a good experience don't go out there wearing the wrong color though or they actually just stay neutral but um you know those two things a concert or a soccer game oh yeah you know those definitely will be some things to experience if you're gonna be in medellin um but yeah, outside of that, that's why I say for me, it's just a vacation city. Cartagena, the only reason why that I live there is because my family is posted up there. That's where I, when I came to Colombia, that's the first place that I went, you know, um, and you know, I, like I said, I lived in Bogota two years and then I moved to um, Cartagena. So, you know, and then I don't be where the tourists had in Cartagena. I live actually in the city, like 30 minutes from all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So um i wouldn't recommend anybody come trying to live in cartagena unless you retire you know if you ain't retired cartagena is definitely not a place for you to come try to live um unless you got a girl and i'm talking about a real one uh as far as cali is concerned cali would be cali and barranquilla barranquilla probably would be my top two choices as far as living is concerned those would probably be my top two choices then bucaramanga armenia Pereira. And Manny Salas, all I would consider all of those locations to live. I mean, now there's a couple of you know little small pueblos or towns outside of the cities like Cartagena and outside of Bogota and outside of Cali and outside of these large larger cities that you can post up in too. But you got to understand the area and know where you at in order to be able to do that. And if you're not a person that's going to be really doing it, ain't no reason to talk about it, you know. So, uh, but yeah, that's what I think about all just Colombia in general, um, uh, the rest of the stuff, Buena Ventura, um, Turbo, these are places that most of you, most people will never even see. Uh, um, you got, uh, you know, all the, all these countries that's along the border, along the coast. And then, you know, in the mountain regions and stuff like that, y'all people ain't going up in there cause that's where the banderas are. That's where all the people that know, or what they think they know about uh, Colombia, that's where they post up at in them areas. And ain't nobody going up in them areas like that. So, um, but yeah, man, that's Colombia pretty much in a nutshell. So, you know, um, I could speak, I speak on that emphatically because that's what I know the best. I know Panama too. I've been there four times, Panama City specifically. Um, it's a little small to me, but it's more Americanized. Um, you know, they still use the dollar over there in that country. Uh, you know, <laughs> shoot, man. One unique thing, or one thing that uh, when they got a they got a street that's like five miles long, with none but banks, none but banks on both sides of the street in Panama City, and <laughs> that was interesting to find that shit out. You know, really? But uh, yeah, man. Um, but they got a skyline. They started they got a beautiful skyline. Oh yeah, they got this uh, uh island. You know, if you take a um boat over to the island, it's called uh to Tobago to. To, to Tobogo or something like that, but it's a little island off the coast of Panama City out there. You take that trip over there, man. That's an experience over there too. To go to the little beach over there and post up, see the little town. It's like a little small pueblo. People live over there, over there on that island, but the beach is the attraction. Um, 
you know, so, you know, if you make it over to Panama City, then check that out. You know, that's that's a I wouldn't I don't think people I think that's a to stay there. Uh, that ain't going to be no young man place to stay. That's a retire. That's a retiree place to stay, too. And you wouldn't even really stay in Panama City. You stay in the little towns outside of Panama City. So. Um, um, and all the other the little. I mean, all that, everything in the Caribbean, man, I ain't recommending none of it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> me, I, me, me being from Tampa, I'm from Tampa, so that all that beach stuff, I, I grew up in a beach city, a beach town, you know what I'm saying? So, like, that ain't really, that don't, that's not no draw for me, you know? So for me, somebody to go to the Grand Cayman and live there, somebody going to the Bahamas and live there, somebody going to Puerto Rico and live there, you know what I'm saying? Or somebody going to Jamaica and live there. Why would I tell them to do any of that? Why? It doesn't make much sense to me, in my mind. Yeah. But somebody might want to because Aruba, they're offering people to they're offering people visas since you're on the topic of residency. They're offering people visas in Aruba for a year to come there and post up if you're a digital nomad. You know, I think you got to make a certain amount of money or show you gotta have a certain amount of money or something like that. There's a couple of stipulations to the visas, but they have that in Aruba. So if you okay. want to live, kick your feet up, you can do that there too. But, um, but yeah, man, I personally, I'm not going to tell nobody to be trying to live in no Caribbean island. I'm not. You know, you got to deal with them hurricanes. And if you ain't, if you, I'm from Florida. If you don't know nothing about them hurricanes, man, hey, you know, good luck you know, if you live in there. Really? <laughs> Shoot. Yo, so yo, 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 state them been touched by a hurricane. Houston have been touched by a hurricane before. You see how much damage them hurricanes do? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that stuff when that was happening. Yeah, you know, so them things they get formed out there in the Gulf of Mexico and coming out uh, out there in the Atlantic and come sweeping through the Caribbean, man. You know, imagine them them, them little them little islands be having to rebuild every other year or whatever, man. You know what I'm saying or they have to or they have some real strong bamboo. You said bamboo. <laughs> it was a little joke, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. I me personally, I wouldn't want to live in because of that fact. Okay. Well, uh, look, man, I'm tired as hell. I appreciate you coming in and dropping some knowledge on the live. No doubt, man. Shoot. Yeah. I peel back. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you letting me on here, man. Shoot. You know what I'm saying? Anybody y'all listening, y'all come over to Learn Crypto TV if you want to. Come check me out. You see my little journey over there, too. I'll be going live in Columbia here this weekend. So anyway, man, um, shoot, man. I'll holler at you, man. You know what I'm saying? Be easy. All right, you as well. I appreciate you coming through. Make sure yes, y'all go subscribe to, uh, what is it? Uh, crypto TV, Learn. Learn Crypto TV. Yeah, Learn Crypto TV. Yes, sir. All right, man, peace. Yes, sir. I'll see you guys tomorrow.